Hello, welcome to another video. It's another limits problem and it involves trigonometric identities. So looking at this, if you have um, a finite value, remember you plug it in. So if we plug in um, pi over two here, sine pi over two is one. One minus one gives us zero on top and under it's gonna be one plus the cosine of two times pi over two. So if we put pi over two here, we're gonna have two times pi over two gives us pi and cosine pi is negative one. So one plus negative one gives us zero. So this is another indeterminate form, zero on top and zero in the denominator. So we have an indeterminate form, zero over zero. So typically, if you're allowed, you do L'Hopital's rule, otherwise you have to do algebra rule. Okay, so what should we do? Well, you want to look for a connection between this and what's on top. And I know that cosine two theta can be written in three different ways. This you need to know as a calculus student. You must know the three ways you can write cosine two theta because it's obtained from the angle sum formula for cosine. So, or the double angle formula. So remember that you could write cosine two theta this way. You can write it as cosine squared theta um, minus sine squared theta. That's one way you can write it. This you need to memorize. Okay, the second way is it could be two cosine squared theta minus one, or it could be the third way, one minus two sine squared theta. So the problem here is, which of these should I use here? Well, obviously I see that I have sine theta minus one, this is what looks closest to it, and I know what's gonna happen eventually, so this is what I'm gonna pick. So we can say that this is the limit as theta goes to pi over two of sine theta minus one over, instead of writing this, let's put this here, will be equal to um, one plus, in parentheses, I'll replace this with one minus two sine squared theta. And if you can see the future, you'll see where this is going. Now, if we try to simplify this, this is gonna be equal to the limit as theta goes to pi over two of sine theta minus one over, now if we remove this parenthesis, we're gonna have one plus one minus two sine squared theta. So it's gonna be one plus one minus two sine squared theta, which is gonna be the limit as theta goes to pi over two of sine theta minus one over, now we combine this, you're gonna have two minus two sine squared theta. Okay, I can factor out this two and then I'm gonna end up with one minus sine squared theta. And I know that one minus sine squared theta gives me a difference of two squares that's gonna give me one minus sine theta one plus sine theta, and I'm done. Okay, so this is gonna be equal to the limit as theta goes to pi over two of sine theta minus one divided by two times one minus sine squared theta. Now this is that difference of two squares that I talked about. This is one squared minus sine squared, which is the limit as theta goes to pi over two of sine theta minus one over two times, here it becomes one minus sine theta and one plus sine theta. And obviously, this will cancel this out and you're gonna get negative one because the positions are switched. So if I cancel this out, I'm gonna get negative one. So this is the limit as theta goes to pi over two of negative one over two times one plus sine theta. Well, if we take this limit, this is gonna be negative one over, if I plug this in here, what is sine pi over two? It's one. What's one plus one? That's two. What's two times two? It's four. And that is the limit. Never stop learning. 
Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.